Sleep is an active state important for renewing our mental and physical health each day. Your doctor has requested you have a sleep study to look for problems occurring during sleep. This is likely your first visit to a sleep center. A sleep study involves a polysomnogram, a recording that tells the sleep specialist what kind of sleep you are getting. Many people wonder how they will be able to sleep in a strange room filled with distractions such as technicians and monitoring equipment. You will be pleased to know that most sleep centers have homey, comfortable rooms more like a motel room than a medical facility. The technical equipment and professionals who record your sleep study are in a separate room. When you arrive at the center, you will be greeted by the sleep technologist who will assist you throughout your study. You will be shown the equipment that will be used and given a chance to ask questions. You will have time to change into night clothes and get ready for bed as you do at home. There may be a waiting period before the technologist applies the sensors for monitoring your sleep activity. During this time, you can read, watch TV, or just relax. During sleep testing, the activities that go on in your body during sleep are monitored by small metal discs called sensors applied to your head and skin with paste, tape, or another adhesive. The ones on your scalp and face measure brainwave activity, eye movement, and muscle tone, all of which are used to determine what stage of sleep you are in. Flexible elastic belts around your chest and abdomen and the sensors at your mouth and nose measure your breathing. A clip on your index finger or earlobe monitors the level of oxygen in your blood and your heart rate. Your sleep may also be videotaped to see what positions you sleep in, whether you move a lot in your sleep, and for the presence of sleep disorders. None of these devices is painful and all are designed to be as comfortable as possible. The sensors may feel strange on your skin at first, but most people do not find them uncomfortable nor a big distraction in falling asleep. The electrode wires are gathered together in a kind of ponytail behind your head so that you will be able to roll over and change positions almost as easily as you would at home. In order to understand your sleep and any problems with it, it is important to look at various brain activities and body systems throughout the night. The specific type of study you will have depends on what type of sleep disorder is suspected. A nighttime sleep study provides information on sleep and breathing disorders such as obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea, nighttime movement disorders or seizure disorders. Your sleep may be studied during the day as well through a series of naps at two hour intervals. This nap study known as the Multiple Sleep Latency Test or MSLT measures daytime sleepiness due to any sleep disorder especially narcolepsy. After the study, a sleep specialist will review and interpret the records to help you and your doctor understand your specific sleep patterns. The sleep study and its analysis and interpretation are part of a complex process. Specially trained professionals handle the many hours of work that are required to process or score the large amount of information recorded during the study. A sleep specialist with in-depth knowledge of sleep and its disorders then interprets the information. A typical sleep study involves more than 800 pages of data. If a sleep disorder is found, a treatment plan will be made to correct your problem. Sleep can be divided into a series of approximately 90-minute periods, each consisting of rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, and non-rapid eye movement, or non-REM sleep. REM sleep is the stage of sleep during which dreaming occurs and is named for the quick eye movements that happen during this stage. Sleep usually progresses from light sleep, non-REM sleep stages 1 and 2, to deeper sleep, either non-REM sleep stages 3 and 4 or stage REM sleep. The type and severity of any sleep disorder can be affected by what sleep stage you are in. This is why you are being asked to sleep with all the sensors on to determine when you are in the various sleep stages. The body's various functions are also affected by sleep stage. For instance, during non-REM sleep, breathing occurs in a very regular pattern of repetitive, well-formed inspirations and expirations at the rate of 12 to 18 breaths per minute. This is seen on the all-night sleep study as a regular, rhythmic wave pattern shown here. Each time an effort is made to breathe, there is movement of the chest and stomach as air flows into the nose or mouth. During REM sleep, breathing is more irregular, but each effort to breathe is accompanied by air going into the lungs. These tracings allow the sleep doctors to look for problems with breathing during sleep. Disruptive sleep patterns are a common problem. At least 84 sleep disorders have been described. All can affect people's personal health and quality of life. Many of these can be diagnosed with a sleep study. Periodic limb movement disorder is a movement disorder that occurs mainly during non-REM sleep. 
Legs and arms may jump or kick, disrupting sleep. Sleepwalking and sleep talking also occur during non-REM sleep and can be very disruptive to you and your family. There are disorders that occur only during REM sleep, including nightmares and a movement disorder in which dreams are acted out. Other sleep disturbances, such as teeth grinding and a seizure disorder, can also be diagnosed during an all-night sleep study, but are not typically associated with a particular stage of sleep. Of all the sleep disorders, obstructive sleep apnea is the most common disorder evaluated in a sleep lab. An estimated 5 in 100 people suffer from obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Mr. Jones is a 48-year-old computer programmer who went to see his doctor at his wife's urging because of his gradually increasing tiredness and sleepiness over the last two years. I was getting an average of seven to eight hours of sleep each night, but I was still waking up feeling tired, and I was getting up two or three times a night to use the bathroom. More and more, I was finding myself getting drowsy during my 25-minute commute into work. I even caught myself dozing off occasionally at my computer or during meetings. Mr. Jones found he couldn't focus and concentrate as well as he used to, but assumed he was just getting older. He also wondered if there might be some other explanation for his chronic fatigue. I started to think maybe it was a depression issue. I was just feeling so low energy all the time. I started drinking more coffee, hoping that would keep me more awake. But then I began to worry that it was the extra caffeine that was causing the headaches I was waking up with each morning and the heartburn I was having trouble with at night. Mrs. Jones was concerned as well. Bob was just so sleepy all the time. Naps after work and on the weekend really weren't making a difference in how tired he seemed. I wondered if his weight might be part of the problem. He's gained gradually over the past five years. I know he was concerned about it, but he just didn't have the energy to stick to a diet or exercise regularly. He wasn't sleeping well either. He was restless, tossing and turning, and he would snore. It bothered my sleep too. But what really worried me was how his breathing sometimes stopped. It actually frightened me because I never knew how long it would last. I felt like I had to watch over him, which meant I wasn't sleeping well either. Based on your symptoms, I suspect that you may have a condition known as obstructive sleep apnea. Now, what that means is that your airways 